What's really going on? That's a common question today as we look at the craziness that's going on in our country and in the world. And I've got good news for us. God wants you to know what's really going on. And the truth is that what's going on is really much better than it seems. You see, our, our perception is very, very limited. Our ability to see the fullness of reality is very limited. As we stand here in this beautiful forest, we can see trees and we can appreciate them. And it's beautiful. We can see the backdrop with the sun shining on it. And we can see grass here. But the reality is there's so much more going on than we'll ever know. We don't, we don't even see the bugs and the microscopic creatures that are down below our feet doing work right now. Work that God designed them to do. We don't see all the birds, the insects that are in the trees right above us, but all of it is part of reality. It's kind of like when you drive through your neighborhood, you see houses, you see cars, and that's all reality. But it's just a small part of reality because we don't see the people that are in the house. And we, we certainly don't know all the stories of the people that are inside the house or inside the car. And so as we get back into Philippians today, Paul is writing to these people that he loves. And this is a letter of encouragement. But in the process, Paul feels the need to remind them that there's something going on that is far more significant than the things that they see with their eyes. So turn with me now to Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Would you pray with me now? Oh, Lord, help us to see the truth. Lord, help us to rejoice in the truth. Lord, I ask that you would give us supernatural peace, supernatural vision to understand more of reality, to get just a glimpse of what you're doing, that it would all be for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So if we're going to understand what's really going on, we first have to understand what's real. And so we go back to the text, we look at verse 12, Paul doesn't want them to be ignorant. He says, I want you to know, brothers. He wants them to understand what's truly going on. The verse says that, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. And before we go too far, I want us to focus on that word really. It's very important. Obviously, you know the root of the word really is real. So Paul wants them to know what's real. And so the fact that he is saying this implies that maybe there was confusion or conflict about what was really going on. And so Paul needs to take the time to explain that to them. And it kind of reminds me of the story in 2 Kings 6 of the servant of Elijah when he went out and he saw the Syrian army surrounding them. And he knew that they were doomed. They didn't stand a chance. And he came back to Elijah and shared the news with them. And what did Elijah do? Elijah prayed for him. He prayed that his eyes would be open and that he would be able to see what was real. And when his eyes were open, he saw horses and chariots of fire. So there was, there was a reality there of a human army that was there that could destroy them. But there was a greater reality of God's army. And the greater reality is the Syrian army didn't stand a chance against God's army. Amen. And we see stories like this throughout the Bible. We see God's armies winning against all odds. You know a lot of the stories. Think of Gideon and his 300. Think of the wall of Jericho. That's ridiculous. There's people marching around the city, shouting, blowing a trumpet, smashing jars, and the wall comes tumbling down. We all know the story. Well, that was the reality of the supernatural. If all they had done is look through their natural eyes, 
they wouldn't have understand, understood the truth of the reality of God. And so we want to understand the full truth of the reality of God. So church, as we've looked at these two different realities, the natural and the supernatural, we realize that there's much more going on than we realize. But God wants us to know what's going on, just like Paul wanted the Philippians to know what was going on at that time. Let's take a look at Paul's natural reality. The natural being the things that he can see with his eyes, hear with his ears, taste, touch, smell. That's the natural reality. In verse 15, we see there was some pretty rough stuff going on. Some indeed preach Christ from envy, rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. So let's look at the lesser reality. Paul's lesser reality was that he was in prison. Was it terrible? I'm sure it was. The lesser reality is that I'm sure the Philippian church was heartbroken over their brother and fellow minister who was in chains in jail. And then we discover shocking news in the first century church. There's preachers preaching with wrong motives. Can you believe it? They were even preaching with the intent to inflict Paul in his imprisonment. I mean, how wicked is that? That's the true reality. His reality was, was difficult, but he never lost sight of the greater reality. And we're going to talk about that later. But as I look around the world today, there's a reality that's pretty ugly. Whenever I look through my natural eyes, the things that I see when I look at reality is I see sin and wickedness on full display like I've never, ever seen it before. People proud to put it on display. And I see division that's just so heartbreaking. My heart is broken over the state of our country right now as I see division along political lines, racial lines, gender. Some of it's even crept into the church. And, oh, church, let us not fall into that trap. Let us not be confused by that that we would allow ourselves to be divided. But Convergence Church, I wanna remind you that we have made a commitment to be united around one thing, and that's the cross of Jesus Christ. Christ crucified and Christ resurrected, amen? And so we put aside secondary and tertiary things, and we unite ourselves around the most important thing, that's Jesus Christ. And I've even noticed in, in myself but I get distracted as I see all the craziness going on in the world and I wonder what's going to happen with my business, what's going to happen in my family, what's going to happen in our country. And I find myself trying to figure it out and I go down these wormholes trying to go on Facebook and YouTube and every news source that I can find to figure out what's really going on. And then it's like God woke me up in a moment and he reminded me I was only seeing a small part of it. I was only seeing the natural he reminded me of Ephesians 6.12 that says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So let us not allow ourselves to be distracted by the, the things we see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. But let's keep our eyes on the greater reality, the supernatural. So let's take a look at this greater supernatural reality. And I don't want us to lose sight of that. The greatest reality, the truest true, is the supernatural reality. So let's take a look at Paul's reality, his supernatural reality in the moment. You see, he understood. Paul said it, that it is all served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak without fear. Amen. Paul understood the truth of the supernatural reality that no matter how things looked, the greater reality was the advancement of the gospel. The greater reality is that the brothers were becoming emboldened to speak the gospel. That incredible, beautiful good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ God come to earth as a baby, lived a perfect life for 33 years, 
deserved no punishment, yet bore all the punishment for our sake. He died on the cross. On the third day, he rose again. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father. That was the gospel message that Paul stood for. That was the supernatural reality that Paul was concerned about that allowed him to be in prison and to continue to rejoice, to not get bogged down by his circumstances. And so for us to do that as believers, it requires us to walk by faith and not by sight. It requires us to exercise some muscles that maybe sometimes we don't think about or that we don't use to walk by faith, to look into the supernatural instead of looking with our, with our natural eyes. We know what Jesus has assigned us to do. We know the Great Commission, go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He assigned us to advance the gospel. So what's going on, Christian? I want to encourage you that no matter what your circumstances look like, if you submitted to Jesus Christ and you've called him Lord and you're living a submitted life to him, he's advancing the gospel through you. And we should praise God for that. Amen. So it's clear that reality is much bigger than we thought it was, that there's a natural and that there's a supernatural. We don't ignore either one of those. They're both reality. Paul, in his horrible circumstances, continued to keep his eyes set on the, on the supernatural, the more important, advancing the gospel. And for us, our lives may be good, they may be bad, but we still need to keep in focus that the things that we see and the things that we feel are the lesser reality and we shouldn't be distracted by those things, whether it's good or bad. It's not that it isn't real. I mean, in Ecclesiastes, we see that there's a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Those things are real, but it's the lesser reality. The supernatural is the thing that is more real. God gives us all of those things. He gives it to us as a gift for us to enjoy. But rejoice in all things, whether they're good or bad. Rejoice in the greatest reality, the supernatural. And rejoice that our feet are set upon the rock as we endure trials or whether we endure blessings. So let me give you just a few things as we think about trying to live this life in, with these two different realities. This life where we want to continue to rejoice with Paul as the, as the gospel is advanced. Number one. Very simple, do your job. It's so easy to be distracted by the cares and the pleasures of the world. It's so easy for me to find myself chasing a, a, a YouTube feed or a Facebook feed and trying to figure out what's going on and what happens. I'm not doing my job anymore. I'm not doing the thing that God assigned me to do because I'm not setting my mind on the supernatural reality. And so I challenge us just do your job as unto the Lord. We're reminded of Matthew 6. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Number two, be content in your situation. Enjoy your situation. It's a gift from God. Whenever we're, here we are Christians in this world with everybody trying to prove their point, everybody trying to get their way, every, everyone demanding their rights. We as Christians have the opportunity to rejoice in our situation and understand that it's been given to us by God. When we look at 1 Corinthians 7, Paul says, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. In verse 20, he says, each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. In 24, he says, So brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. So be content with your situation. It's from God and it's a gift. Number three, prepare for the return of our Savior Jesus Christ. He is coming back. Friend, I pray that I'm wrong, but there's a very good chance that our natural lesser reality could get a lot worse. I remember in Mark where Jesus gave the disciples warnings like be on guard. They're going to deliver you over to councils, beat you in synagogues. 
and that the gospel must first be proclaimed. But he says, don't be anxious, even though brother will be delivered by brother over to death and father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you'll be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. So Christian, endure, endure. Our savior is coming back. He will return for us. It's not gonna be in the same way that he came before as a little baby. He's gonna come riding a white horse and he's gonna come with a sword, but he is coming back for us. First Thessalonians four says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So Christian, encourage one another. The Lord is coming back. Be ready for him. And fourthly, enjoy God. Enjoy him in your work. Enjoy him in the station he's placed you. Enjoy him as you expect him to come back. And as you understand the reality of the natural and the supernatural, set your mind on things above, not on things that are on earth. And aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and work with your hands. So Christian, do you see what's going on? Do you see that the gospel is being advanced, that Christ is being proclaimed no matter how bad it looks? So take courage, Christian. Our salvation is near. And today... If you've heard this message and you've not seen this eternal reality, if you're a person that where if you're honest, you don't love God, then today I urge you, don't wait another minute. Humble yourself before Jesus Christ and call him Lord and admit that you screwed everything up, that you've made horrible mistakes that you can't fix and ask him to fix them. And I guarantee you that you'll find love and peace that you'll never find anywhere else on the planet. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, I thank you for the rock of your word where we can rest and we can come and we can be reminded of what is real. Oh, Lord, would you help us to set our minds on eternity? Would you help us to seek that which is above? Lord, would you protect us from being distracted by the cares and the pleasures of this world? And, oh, Lord, if anyone has heard this message that doesn't know you, God, I ask that you would give them eyes to see. That, Lord, their eyes would come off of the natural and that they would be placed on the supernatural, Lord. That they would see the beauty of Jesus Christ who offered himself even though he didn't have to. Oh, Lord, may you be glorified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.